so welcome back to lecture 18 in the last lecture we were looking at unit vector transformations so we saw an example of water molecule and uh, there we saw how under c2v point group we can operate different operations onto unit vectors that is the linear vectors along x y z direction in an orthogonal coordinate system and saw what are the matrices corresponding to that and how those matrices are one dimensional matrices because there is only one basis set in that right so just to remind you again so let me just write it again so for c2v point group so we had e c2z sigma xz sigma yz and under this if we had tau x so e operating on x will give you x so that takes the character or the matrix as one then c to z takes it as minus one because x goes to minus x then sigma xz x remains as x so we have plus one and for sigma yz it will be minus one right so writing this should be fairly simple so for y again it will be one c to z again it will be minus one now this will be minus one and this will be plus one right and for tau z all the characters or matrix elements will be just plus one right so that should be very clear so this was when we considered unit vectors which are linear vectors along x y and z so linear vectors of unit length right so this is my x vector this is my y vector and this is my z vector these are the unit vectors and we saw how the transformation gives us the matrix representations so why are we worried about unit vector transformations we'll come back to it little later but let's first see how to do it now as i mentioned in the last lecture there is also a vector which is called as rotational vector now rotational vectors are defined as the sense of rotation of x axis and is represented by rx uh, sense of rotation is taken as anti clockwise when i'm looking from positive side of x axis towards origin okay similarly sense of rotation of y axis is taken as ry vector and again it is anti clockwise when when i'm looking from positive side of the y axis towards origin and similarly for z so I am looking from this side, so it appears as anti-clockwise. So these are also vectors which will be needed later on. So we'll see how various transformations look like under Rx, Ry, and Rz as the basis set. Okay, this is Rz. Okay, so let us try what happens. So E will be the simple case. So I'm not going to discuss that because E will not going to change anything. So all the characters under E for rx ry or rz will be one just like for tau x tau y tau z right so let's extend this table and tau rx tau ry tau rz and as it is a single basis set so the order of the matrix or the dimension of the matrix will be one cross one so there will be just only one element in the matrix so we can write down for all three cases it will be one right that is very simple to see now for c to z so we have to be very careful in visualizing these rotation matrices so if i do a c to z operation on r x vector so r x vector so let me draw it here again only for r x so if i do this is my r x and if i do a c to z operation what do i get this is my minus x axis and this is how it looks right the vector changes its direction so if i'm looking from this side it now uh, so i did not draw it correctly let me just draw it again so if i now draw it correctly it would appear clockwise right this is the direction it will take if i do a c to z rotation so 
consider this the head part of this vector will go to the left side and the tail part will come here right so that's how it will appear like this it will appear like this right it is not straightforward to see but like if you try and practice it with rotation do it by hand and then see for yourself it will be simple enough okay so in that case this will become a minus one element right okay now let us look at for again for c2z but for ry so this is the original ry this is my xyz now if i do a c2z operation this vector this vector will move over here right this will come over here so again it will appear like this and if i'm visualizing from this side because my visualization does not change so if i'm visualizing from this side it will appear as clockwise so it should the vector becomes like this right r y so that also gives me a character as negative one in this case okay so i hope it is i'm making it clear so let me just uh, draw for now rz operation so rz is uh, anti clockwise from here this is my rz so i'm looking from this side and i'm drawing it anti clockwise so it's the sense of rotation of this particular axis okay so this is it's curving like this from behind and coming ahead right so it's going behind the line and then coming up again okay so that's how the anti clockwise rotation of vector would look like if i'm looking from the top right okay so now again if i do a c2z on this what do i get so what i get is no change right so that means i will get because this axis is collinear with z axis c to z so there would not be any change and rz will remain as rz so character will be one or the matrix will be one okay so that should clarify so now let us look at what happens if we do sigma xz operation onto rx so here is your rx if i'm doing sigma xz operation xz is this plane which is bisecting this particular vector right so if i'm reflecting anything which is crossing this plane the let's say if i'm doing sigma xz now the vector will turn its direction right if we do sigma xz rx will change its direction and it will now appear to as uh, moving clockwise so that would mean that it takes negative 1 as the matrix here now if i do sigma xz again this plane reflect ry by sigma xz this vector would be just represented as a mirror image right so this vector would come to this set and then if i'm still looking from this side it will still appear as anti clockwise so sigma yz on rx will give me rx so there is no change in sign so it will remain as plus 1 so similarly again if i do sigma xz on ry so sigma ry would remain as 1 whereas if i do sigma yz on ry it will turn out to be negative okay so you have to do it yourself and try to see if you cannot understand this i would say that uh, what you can do is you can take a paper strip arrow take a cutout in a anti clockwise direction and then do that rotation by hand and then see for yourself if the direction changes or not or we can discuss that more in the interactive session if this is not clear this operation is not clear okay so for rz again because both the planes are containing z axis in both the cases it will be negative okay so try to visualize this and see if you can do this unit vector transformations for any other point group also
Okay. So now why we are doing this uh, unit vector transformations? We earlier did with, with x, y, z together as the basis set and now we are doing x, y, z for linear vectors and for uh, rotation vectors. So let's see, there is something called as reducible representation. and something called as irreducible representation. So let us see one by one, both of them, what does it mean? Okay. So I'll be writing representation as rep n so that it is, I don't have to write the full thing every time. Okay, so now let us take again the case of water molecule because we have been discussing that and we have already solved all of it. So let's say for C2B point group, when we took x, y, z as the basis, what did we have? What were the matrices? The matrices came out to be 1, 0, 0. This will be now a 3 cross 3 matrix because we have 3 vectors as the basis set or 3 basis sets, not 3 basis sets, 3 elements in the basis set. Okay. So now if I do C to Z, I will get negative 1 for X, negative 1 for Y, and positive for Z. Similarly, if I am doing sigma XZ, I will get 1, 0, 0. Y will be negative 0, 0, 1. X and Z will be positive. In this case, it will be X will be negative, Y and Z will be positive, right? that we have already worked out. Sorry, this element got wrong here. This will be zero and one. Okay. So now if you see that we can reduce this representation to its lower basis. So what do I mean by that? If you carefully see this matrix has elements only along the diagonals, right? These elements are only along the diagonals and all the off diagonal elements of the matrix are zero. So this kind of matrix where the elements can be actually written only along diagonal or along the square diagonals. We will also see that example. So only along the diagonal or along the square diagonals, these kind of matrices are called as block factored matrices. What is the advantage and disadvantage? We'll see. Not disadvantage, we'll, we'll see the advantage of it. So all four matrices in this case can be block factored with similar dimensions. Right? So now I can actually write down this representation as uh, a linear combination if I just write down this one minus one, the first element, first corresponding element of all four matrices minus one, this is my tau one, tau two will be this one, one central element minus one, minus one, one, and tau three will be one, 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 one. Right? So this matrix can now be block factored into three matrices and then can be written as a linear combination of these three matrices. Right? So you can write in terms of matrix. Okay. So what we have shown is that when I take X, Y, Z as the basis, all together as a basis, I get a representation which can be reduced further by doing block factorization of the matrix and converting them into simpler matrices, which individually have basis set as X, Y, or Z, right? So those were the unit vector transformations which we did. And we saw that uh, one of this, for example, this one I think is the tau Z representation and one of them will be tau x. I think this one will be tau x and this one will be tau y, right? So we can see that upon doing block factorization of this, these matrices, we can convert this into one of the basic sets of the 
matrix representations which cannot be reduced further so you cannot reduce one dimensional matrix further down right so this type of representation is called as reducible representation and these type of representations are called as irreducible representations which cannot be reduced further okay now what is the advantage of this the advantage is that there can be many reducible representations for a particular point group given that we can have as many number of basis sets as possible so you can have n number of reducible representations and n dimensions there is no count on dimensions also you can have for water also you can have 6 cross 6 matrix 3 cross 3 matrix depending on what is your basis set but there can be only certain number of irreducible representations for a given molecule or for a given point group. What is that number? So number of irreducible, so I will write IR for irreducible and REPN for representation. So number of irreducible representations for a given point group is equal to number of classes okay so that means let's say again if we consider the c2v point group we have how many classes we have four classes there right c to z each element is a class in itself because it's a cyclic group i think so you should have tau 1 tau 2 tau 3 tau 4 right and then we have seen earlier that you can have these ones as your representations let's not worry about what is the basis set in this but uh, it will be either xyz or rx ry rz or one of these basically so you have minus 1 1 minus 1 right and then you can also arbitrarily write down for this particular point group it is easy to write down by just assuming these characters and seeing if they follow the rules of gmt whether the product of these characters give rise to the product which should come out as per gmt right so we can see that we can arbitrarily also fill this table by writing this irreducible representation by just writing the characters or you can write down a reducible representation and reduce it by block factorization by writing just characters there is another way if you actually do let's also calculate the trace here so trace here will be 3 minus 1 plus 1 and plus 1 okay so let's write down the trace over here So tau m let's call it as tau m so 3 minus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and then you can see by doing a simple trial and error method you can divide this into sums of three irreducible representations right so 1 1 1 and uh, this will be minus 1 minus 1 1 this will be 1 minus 1 1 and 1 1 minus 1 i think this will not follow the rules of gmt so because there is only one negative so this will amount to be the correct uh this thing because two needs to be positive and two characters needs to be negative so now we have tau one tau two tau three right and we can also get the fourth one by using unit vector transformation but these are the ways to actually reduce a reducible representation into something called as irreducible representations which are these right so once you have the irreducible representation you can do many more things which we will see down the line but the important part is that how do we arrive at irreducible representation what is the best way to write irreducible representation so let us uh, see different ways of writing a uh, finding a irreducible representation for a point group So the first thing which we saw was to write down 
the complete matrices using a given basis set and then block factorization of the matrix, right? That was the first way. The second way is to do it by changing the basis sets. So like we went from, instead of taking x, y, z together, we went to unit vector transformations and we saw that single unit vector gave us the irreducible representations. So by changing, so what we did, we changed the basis sets there, right? Third way is by carrying out similarity transformations to diagonalize a matrix. So this is a tedious method. It is not straightforward because here we need to find out a matrix which can be uh, used for similarity transformation to actually diagonalize the matrix. So sometimes when we take a higher order basis set, we get the matrices which are not in block factored or diagonalized form, right? So in that case, we need to do a carry out a similarity transformation, which is equivalent of changing the basis set as we have learned, right? So we need to carry out a similarity transformation. So for example, if we have, let's say, if we have E, A, B, and certain set of elements, and the corresponding matrix representations are D1, D2, D3, and so on. So what we need to do is we need to find a matrix Q such that we can do Q inverse D Q to find a D1 prime. So that D1 prime is now diagonalized or block factored, right? Once you block factor, you have block factored a matrix, you can now write it as a linear combination and then you have, ar you arrive at uh, irreducible representation. But this is not a very straightforward method. Finding Q is a big challenge, right? Because it is not apparently intuitive. What will you use to multiply here to find a new matrix, which is now diagonalized matrix. It's not straightforward. So we'll not be discussing this, but this is a way to do it. Let us now look at another way, which is much more easier and more mathematical, which is called as, which is by uh, using great orthogonality theorem. Okay. Let's discuss great orthogonality theorem in the next class. And meanwhile, we have few minutes left. So what we can do is we can actually look at, let's, uh, I was planning to do it as a home exercise, but let's do it for here. So let us try to develop a character table. So I have also not introduced what is a character table. So develop a character table for C3V point group. NH3 molecule example. Okay. Uh, using XYZ as the basis set. Okay. Let us, let us work it out over here. Okay. So let us first define what is a character table. So character table is a list of all irreducible representations and corresponding basis sets is called as character table. Okay, so we'll see it has multiple uses a lot of applications and uh, let's see how to write one for c3v point group we'll only write the basic character table without worrying about what are the basis sets for now and then later on when we actually look at the great orthogonality theorem then we will see how to write for complete character table let us start with writing a incomplete character table we have already written one character table for c2v point group now let us see how to write one for 
and this was fairly easy uh, because this one was actually by simply using the unit vector and uh, linear rotation vectors so now let us see how to write one for c3 v point group okay so c3 v point group the elements group elements or the operations are 2 c3 3 sigma v so now you notice one thing here that i have clubbed c3 and c3 square here into one class here and then i have written two in front of because there are two elements in that particular class so i have written two over here right so this is called as order of the class and then three sigma sigma v1 sigma v2 sigma v3 i have combined because these three uh, form one class and then i have combined and then i have written it as three sigma v's right so this is just to highlight that uh, i'm combining the class elements over here now let us try to write down the matrix representation using so using xyz as the basis set right that was given in the question so that means if we are using xyz as the basis our matrix will be 3 cross 3 order and e will be just the identity matrix or the unitary matrix unit matrix of order 3 right now for c3 we know for c3 we can write as cos theta minus sin theta 0 sin theta cos theta which will take the value as uh, 120 theta will take the value as 120 degrees so we will have cos 120 which will be minus half then we will have minus root 3 by 2 which is minus of sin 120 and then 0 then we have root 3 by 2 minus half 0 0 0 and then we'll have one over here right this is for c3 one of the matrix only i have to write because the other operation although it will have a different matrix representation but the trace will be same right for c3 square let's say so this is for c3 and for c3 square i don't need to write because i'm interested in trace and trace will be same for c3 and c3 square because the both the elements belong to same class now for sigma v again so we don't need to write uh, for all three sigmas we can write only for sigma v1 remember that we discuss if we have one of the sigma v1 actually lies along yz plane so it will be easier to write for this one than for the other two sigmas right so we'll just write for sigma v1 and then we'll work with trace okay so now this will be 1 0 0 0 minus 1 0 and 0 0 1 okay so i'm not writing for the other two sigmas because the trace is going to be same for those two sigmas all right so now if you notice here this matrix can be block factored as 1 cross 1 1 cross 1 1 cross 1 but this one can be block factored only as 2 cross 2 and 1 cross 1 right so if you notice here i cannot because there are off diagonal elements present so i have a 2 cross 2 matrix and a 1 cross 1 matrix similarly here i have a 2 cross 2 matrix and a 1 cross 1 matrix so then i have to divide this also in the same fashion so that the dimension of the matrices become equal so now if i divide this what i get two different uh, representations so tau 1 will be 1001 0, 0, 1, minus half minus root 3 by 2 root 3 by 2 minus half and 1 0, 0 minus 1 and then tau 2 will be 1 1 1 okay so now as it turns out the basis for this one is actually z you can actually do the unit vector transformation to see which one gives you 1 1 1 as the matrix element or the character right and this one we will see that later how to find the basis sets but this one we have this is a two dimensional uh, matrix and you cannot reduce it further and the combined basis for this is x comma y so i'm writing x comma y because 
in this particular case x y forms a degenerate pair why this happens because x and y cannot be separated in this particular point group so what does it mean so any property which lie along x axis and y axis you will not be able to separate for example uh, let's say if on the central metal atom there is a, there is pz orbital px orbital and py orbital so for this particular case tau z has a different property so that means pz has a different property as compared to px and py orbital and because you cannot separate out x and y so px and py orbitals are actually degenerate and they have same energy so we can say that the symmetry so these are the purely symmetry rules there is no chemistry here so these are the pure symmetry rules so symmetry forces px and py to have same energy for central atom in c3v point group so this is a direct relevance or direct application of symmetry into the orbital diagram so we have shown that symmetry forces px and py because x and y cannot be separated so that means px and py also cannot be separated because px and py lie along the coordinate system x and y and because now px and py cannot be separated that means you don't know which one is px and which one is py that means they both have same energy right so with this uh, we can stop here and then in the next lecture we will discuss great orthogonality theorem and how do we use this theorem to actually obtain irreducible representations all right thank you